All right, good afternoon, and welcome to Litson RV here in Forest City, Iowa, where we literally are just a mile up the road from the Winnebago, Itasca, and Winnebago Touring Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to welcome all of you today where we have a really exciting webcast. We've had a lot of interest in this product, and we've had a, over a thousand views on our YouTube channel since we launched our video on this, the new 2016 Winnebago Touring Coach Travado 59K, which is an all-new fuel efficient B-Van from Winnebago Industries, a wonderful twin bed setup that we're going to cover in detail today. So again, welcome to all of you. I want to introduce a couple of folks here. Uh, Josh Dam is our special events and marketing director behind the camera, and also Casey Singlestead, who is our RV sales manager here at Litson RV. So again, welcome to all of you. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping issues before we get going. Um, each of you are logged on right now to our Litson webpage, and if you click on the chat box, on the right hand corner of your page. Be sure to click inside the chat box. We'll cover all of your questions live and I see that we already have a couple, so thank you for that. Um, what has made these so interactive is when we can have the opportunity to interact with you, our guests, in covering your questions. And as we have questions come in, uh, we'll pause the, uh, the presentation of the vehicle and we'll cover those questions live. So we'll cover the first two questions that came up here in just a little bit. Um, but again, keep in mind that anytime you have a question, just chat on the uh, lower right hand side of your screen on the blue chat box. Also keep in mind that we've had wonderful success where any of our consultants can actually do a live interactive presentation on any of our in-stock RVs right here within our marketing studio uh, at our all new dealership here in Forest City. We can do that in the comfort of your own home or office. Uh, we'll have one of our sales consultants mic'd up so that you can hear live, you can ask for things to be covered, and it's a wonderful interactive presentation on any of our in-stock RVs. So keep in mind that we can always do that for you on any of the vehicles that we have here at our facility. So this is the new 2016 Winnebago Touring Coach uh, Travado 59K, which is the second floor plan uh, in the Winnebago Touring Coach uh, B-Band line within the Ram Promaster segment. So the two floor plans within the Travado. Um, what makes this coach so unique is that not only is it a fuel efficient B-Van that has twin beds in the rear, but this coach was designed explicitly by the brand manager within the Winnebago Touring Coach Division of Winnebago Industries, explicitly in what he would want to see in a B-Van that he and his family would use. In fact, he already has one on order and will be taking delivery for his own personal use here within the next week. So it is a wonderfully thought through coach and uh, as we get going here, Casey, go ahead and take it away. All right. Well, I think we'll just kind of work our way um, around the coach and just kind of start here at the front, um, work our way around the driver's side to cover all of that before we take a look at the roof and then head inside. And then, Casey, I don't know if you saw the two questions that have already come in, wanting to know if you could cover uh, the differences in the gas and the diesel versions within the powertrain. Sure. Um, so... It's a really great question. Uh, the diesel version of this coach is um, somewhat of a new option that has recently become available. Uh, we're expecting our first uh, diesel relatively soon. Right, within the next two weeks. Um, and so essentially both of them are same, everything about the chassis is going to be the same. Uh, so both of them have a gross vehicle weight rating of the 9,350 pounds. Um, both of the engines are the 3.6 liter from Dodge. Because, uh, of course, you're on the Dodge Promaster chassis, uh, which is basically our version of the Fiat Ducato chassis, which has been really popular throughout Europe. Um, so your primary differences is going to come in uh, your horsepower and torque numbers. So uh, uh, your gas version, which is what we have here, has um, 280 horses, 260 pounds-feet of torque. The diesel is going to be 174 horses uh, with 295 pounds-feet of torque. Yep. And then also just to clarify, the diesel is actually a three liter and the gas, oh, is, a, and the gas is a 3.6. Right. Um, and then of course another difference for you will also be fuel economy. <clears throat> so in your gas version, um, you'd be expecting uh, something probably in the upper teens, something 16 to 18 miles per gallon. Uh, with the diesel, that should upgrade that by about 10% or so. And we just have a flood of questions coming in, so I want to be respectful of those questions that have come in. Um, and we'll just cover these in order. We're going to kind of jump around a little bit. The first question wanting to know whether or not the USB ports, because that's one thing that is, is really a unique thing within this coach, 
is that there are an incredible number of usb charging ports for all of your portable devices wanting to know whether or not those are ac powered or dc powered oh um all of your so there's about twelve usb ports throughout the coach i believe um and all of those will be dc powered and then uh, another question that came in which we've already covered but if anybody wants us to again just uh, chat that back in wanting to confirm that it is available in a diesel version yep. and if you could also cover the differences in the generators sure um and i will mention too one of the things that i forgot to talk about in terms of the gas versus diesel is of course the price difference as well um, when you move to the diesel engine versus the gas you're looking it's about a six thousand dollar upgrade in order to get the diesel um, generator is also different based on which coach you get uh, when you have the gas engine uh, you that's paired with the 2.8 uh, kilowatt cummins onan which is a gas powered generator so that's what uh, on the coach that we're looking at today if you do the diesel version then of course you change your you change your fuel source and so then you have a 2.5 kilowatt um, lp powered uh, generator also by cummins and another great question that came in is how do you recommend people deal with the fact that the coach does not have a built-in inverter and one of the things that we'll cover as we go through this and i think you'll you'll find this as we get inside the coach the coach has really been geared to be um, really an off the grid style coach so to speak um, almost all of the appliances in the coach will run on 12 volt and you'll also find as we get up on the roof that it has the built-in 100 watt solar panel system so as we go through here, you're going to find that nearly all of the appliances will run on 12 volt. Uh, the two primary ones that you would need to fire your generator for would be the rooftop air conditioner and the convection microwave oven. So we'll cover all of those as we get inside. Um, Casey, also, if you can touch on um, why this coach does not have a spare tire. Sure. Um, so some of the things that Winnebago really wants to do is basically free up as much space as possible so that you've got lots of good storage. And then, of course, weight as well. Um, so a spare tire is a fairly heavy item, and of course, it takes up space as well. Uh, so since there's not a spare tire that comes with the coach, instead what uh, Winnebago provides you with is actually a tire repair kit as a part of the accessories. Um, and we'll actually see that when we walk around the coach back in the bathroom. But essentially, you're given all the tools that you need in order to repair a flat tire, um, should you incur a problem like that. Uh, versus having a spare tire that's taking up the space and the weight that it would require. Yeah, and to, and to further expand upon that, um, Casey brought up the, the concept of the fact that Winnebago is attempting to free up cargo carrying capacity, which is absolutely dead on accurate. One thing that you're going to find throughout a lot of the light duty automotive manufacturers, um, our dealership being a Chevrolet Buick GMC dealership, a lot of the light duty auto manufacturers have gone to the tire inflation uh, repair style kits as opposed to utilizing a spare tire. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is they're under um, a lot of duress to meet EPA uh, fuel economy standards. So they also are trying to free up a lot of weight uh, in, in order to meet those EPA standards, which is also why you'll find a lot of different things that manufacturers are doing with respect to freeing up weight. Uh, the spare tire being one, a lot of the aluminum block engines that are also freeing up weight, they're trying to hit those EPA standards. So. Um, couple that with the fact that this is a very, very common tire that is available at, at seemingly every, every truck stop that's out there. So um, the coach also does come with roadside assistance, so it's very easy to get a, a, a tire in if you need one. One question that did come up, and I'd like to save this for the end if we can, is um, doing an operational on how to deploy and bring back in the awning. We'll save that one for the end if that's okay. Off and away. And again, great questions. Please keep those coming in. That's what makes these uh, live webcasts so interactive. Yeah, and before I forget, I will cover with that in terms of the cargo carrying capacity. I mean, you just have an incredible amount on this vehicle. Um, this particular unit, the way that it's been optioned out, you actually have uh, just over 1,900 pounds worth of cargo carrying capacity. So. And, and that's on a gross vehicle weight rating of 9,350 pounds. So. I mean, you know, that's close to a 7,400 pound curb weight. So a very light vehicle to begin with. Yep. Um, so one of the unique items about the coach that we're looking at today is that it does have the upgraded appearance package, uh, which basically um, means a few things for you, but one of which is that your uh, cladding that's up here on the front end is actually painted to match the body of the coach. Um, the standard option would be the standard, um, it's kind of a dark charcoal color instead. Nice feature of the, of the uh, ProMaster chassis is the fact that you do have 
the, mount, the headlights are mounted much higher so that that way, um, you know, heaven forbid you should ever be in any type of accident or collision of some sort. It's designed so that, that way the headlights should not be impacted. Um, so again, just kind of lowering what your expense would be on something like that. Which ironically, those headlamps are actually one of the, the higher expense items in a front end style collision. Yep. Another really great thing about, um, again, the chassis that we use here is the fact that your side mirrors, not only are they very large, uh, but both the standard side mirror as well as the lower convex mirror are both powered. Um, so all of that is handled just right inside the driver's door in order to control all of that. And they also power collapse back up against the side. So if, if you are bringing this inside of a garage or if you're even just tinkering around inside the garage, um, with the touch of a button, they power fold back and piggyback up against the side walls of the coach. Yep, so if width is something that's uh, important to you. Um, a couple of the other items that are part of that deluxe appearance package that we talked about with the painting of the front cladding um, is also the additional painting here on the side of the coach um, that basically allows your windows to essentially blend right in um, and just really upgrades the, the styling of that. And then, of course, also the stainless steel rocker panel that's located at the bottom of the coach and actually wraps all the way around the rear of it as well. Um, a few things here on the side to talk about. Uh, you do have a coax cable available here, uh, which is also available on your patio side. Uh, so over here, whether it's a portable satellite dish or cable at your campground, you've got easy hookup mm -hmm. for that. Um, on the patio side, which we'll see uh, when we finish our way around, would be a good spot for, um, you know, an exterior TV or something of that nature. And then, Casey, a follow-up question that just came in, and I want to cover these as they come in to be respectful of those um, uh, times that people are spending with us, wanting to know if we can add an inverter um, after purchase. And we absolutely can. We can add, uh, we've added upwards of 1,000 to 2,000 watt inverters. The problem that you run into is the size of the inverter, where to place it, and what space you're willing to give up. So. All of that's absolutely possible, but I think what you're going to find is that as we go through uh, the walkthrough on the coach, so much of the coach is designed to be utilized off the grid in a dry or hotel camping uh, destination that there's going to be only a couple of handfuls of uses that uh, you would actually need an inverter for. So, yep. um, so just next to your coax, so of course, is your 30 amp power source. Um, really great thing about this is the fact that it does have an automatic transfer switch, so you're not having to fumble around with that cord in order to plug that into a transfer switch afterwards. Um, your LP fill is located just at the bottom of the coach. Um, this is a six gallon uh, LP tank, I believe. Does that sound right? Yeah, six gallon LP tank. Um, and now the reason for that is that there's not a whole lot of use for that LP, um, which you'll find as we go through this, as, as Ron mentioned several times, um, it's really designed to be an efficient coach uh, that you can use for dry camping um, as much as you'd like. Uh, here you have the dedicated storage space for your sewer hose. This is a 10-foot sewer hose that comes standard with the coach. In addition to, of course, two different ways in order to fill your water. Um, your standard tank fill as well as the city fill. Uh, of course, the exhaust for the coach. This is the exhaust for your Truma Combi um, heating source. And then, of course, across the back, one of the really unique things about this B-Van is the fact that you do have a uh, flush system for your black tank. Uh, so you simply need to plug your hose up into that and it'll sanitize your tanks for you. Of course down below you've got the exhaust for the uh, 2800 watt generator that we talked about earlier as well as of course your sewer. Yep, and then, then to the rear down here, um, each of these are uh, 16 inch stylized aluminum wheels. Alright, as we work our way across the back, um, as you can see, we've got the cargo doors open, so you've got complete access to the inside of your coach. Um, in the 59K, of course, you have the rear bathroom. So basically, you can, uh, there's a curtain that will allow you to completely uh, block this off if you prefer for the bathroom to not be open. Um, and then, of course, you have the additional accessories that are located here. Uh, your water pump switch, uh, as well as the switch for the LED light strip. Some additional 12, 12 volt power source as well as 110 volt. And then of course your um, shower spigot. And then these are some of the accessory tools that we were talking about earlier that's down in this uh, uh, storage location. Is basically everything that you would need in order to change out a tire or repair a tire. Um, this is the nice little uh, repair kit that comes with it. So it's nice and compact, doesn't take up a whole lot of space or weight. 
um, and then as I mentioned, all the tools that you'd need in order to change a tire. In terms of the hitch, uh, the coach is capable of towing up to 3,500 pounds. It also comes with the four pin adapter um, uh, for any type of tow vehicle that you may be uh, putting behind your coach. And you'll, you'll notice um, this was actually a, a vehicle that we had ordered for inventory and a guest had purchased it and then we added the bike rack which we'll cover here in a moment but one nice thing about this hitch platform is even if you use a breakaway or stowaway for a bike rack you do have 350 pounds that you can put on a vertical tongue weight on that hitch so um, for bikes and um, stowing pods and things like that that will break away from the vehicle or collapse um, quite a bit of vertical tongue weight um, in a B van like that with it being 3,500 pounds and 350 pounds of vertical tongue weight. Um, if I can also interrupt, um, a comment that was made is wondering if the LP tank um, is too small if you go with the diesel version and then with the accompanying um, LP genset. And with that LP genset, the one thing to keep in mind is that it is the smaller of the two gensets, which is absolutely adequate for the coach. It's only a 2,500 watt, which is, but it is absolutely um, adequate to power everything in the coach. That burn rate um, of propane only averages between four tenths of an hour and six tenths of a gallon per hour at half load. So if you do the math on that, you can get close to 24 to 28 hours out of a tank of propane um, from your genset. So it's, it's absolutely achievable. And as you're going to find as we go through here, there's only a couple of uses that you're really even going to need um, 110 volt power. So we'll cover that as we go. Um, also, um, Casey, a follow-up question to that. Uh, for late fall camping, can an extend -a stay be added for the propane tank um, for an additional auxiliary LP tank? Um, yeah, I, there would be no reason why it couldn't. Um, and the thing to keep in mind is one of the great things is that you've got um, an accessory uh, hookup for your LP that's located just at the rear corner of the coach. Um, so it'd be super easy in order to add something like that. There's some of our coaches where your, your, your LP tank is mounted in different places that makes that slightly more difficult. But because of this accessory hookup, that would be an easy item to add. Yeah, that's a great point because what that'll do is that'll extend the, the uh, capacity that you have within that propane system. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I'll cover while we're here on the outside is just some of the features on this uh, the driver's side cargo door, uh, since we won't be able to see it from the inside. So, um, of course, you have the additional towel, towel bar uh, for your rear bathroom, uh, but then you also have some great features in terms of um, your toilet paper roll would be able to go right inside of here, and as you can see, you can completely secure that off, so that, that way you're not having to remove that in order to use the shower. And then you also have an additional locking system. Uh, for the rear cargo doors, because of course the last thing that you want is to be using the restroom and have someone open the rear cargo doors. So that this way you can actually lock it from the inside to make sure that no one uh, can access uh, the rear of the coach from the exterior. Because it's pretty clear that you all don't want to see me shower. <laughs> That's probably true. But what a, what a great expansive bath. I mean, there is a lot of room in here to be utilized uh, for showering. Yep. All right, well, I think we'll go ahead and um, take a little trip of our steps so that we can look, take a look at the roof of the Travato. Josh, you want to handle things backwards and sideways? It's like going up the walk a bit. All right, so there's a few things to uh, point out with, that are a bit unique uh, that are on the roof of the Travato. So obviously one of, the, one of the largest things that you'll see is, of course, the awning that's mounted to the, to the roof rail. All right, so one of the largest things that you'll notice um, on the roof is, of course, the powered awning that's mounted to that. So that's an 11 and a half foot powered um, awning. Uh, so you get a nice patio space. But then starting from the very front, um, of course, you have the King Jack TV antenna that'll give you the digital amplified meter. The best thing about this, of course, is the fact that it has, um, it's stationary. There's no, there's no need to worry about cranking a TV antenna up and more importantly back down again so that you don't rip one off. We've all done that, your boy with the TV antenna still extended. Uh, just behind that, a fairly unique item uh, with the max air vent. Uh, so this is an upgrade with a deluxe powered ventilator fan. Um, and what that gives you is you've got a remote, automatic temperature control. Uh, the rain hood that's on that will allow you to use the fan um, during, you know, if you've got some, some non-ideal weather situation, um, also if you're not in the coach, you can go ahead and leave that on and not have to worry about bringing that back down should it start raining while you're gone. 
Uh, of course, you've got a few antennas that are on the roof for your different stereo systems. The 13, uh, it's a 13,500 BTU, high efficiency, low profile uh, air conditioning system. Just behind that is, uh, of course, your solar panels. So this is what Ron's brought up a couple different times now, uh, which is a 100 watt uh, Zant solar panel charging system. And the great thing about this is not only do you already have 100 watts worth of solar that's mounted to your roof, but it's also wired down to the patio side of your coach so that you can hook up additional solar panels um, portably, essentially. And uh, so that, that way, if you, if you need even more power stores in order to run some of those items, because you are going to be doing a lot of dry camping, you can absolutely do that by hooking up additional power stores, or uh, solar panels, excuse me. And then, of course, you have some different venting items uh, around that area as well for that rear bathroom. So I think that covers everything in terms of the roof. The other option that is available that's not uh, installed on this motorhome is the roof rack. Um, so you have a roof rack uh, option which will also allow you to carry two kayaks. So that would be available that would additional, that would be added to the rear, or to the roof, excuse me, in addition to the ladder that would go on the back of the coach in order to access that. I think we'll make our way down and go through the passenger side. And as we work our way over to this location, uh, this is actually the quick port that uh, Casey was referring to. So this is actually pre-wired into the ZAMP controller. So the ZAMP controller we're going to find is on our one place panel right back behind this panel. And you can add additional portable panels by simply plugging them in and you can use the expanding portable ones of which I may grab one here in a minute because the, we have them in our um, RV parts store. So you can add the panels here so that if you have the coach facing in different locations, and you want a better um, angle towards the sun, you can certainly do that right from the pre-wire that's located right there. Also, as we, as we keep going, um, Casey, a, a guest wanted to know, um, she had thought that this coach had the sliding screen door, which as we work our way this way, we'll go ahead and, and take that out. Oh, sure. Um, yep, we'll go through that. Uh, before we get to that area, a few of the items that you'll notice here. Um, you've got additional power sources with another 110 volt outlet as well as another 12 volt outlet. Um, and then of course that additional coax uh, input that I mentioned as well is also located here on the patio side so that if you, um, if you do have an exterior TV that you'd like to set up you can uh, very easily do that. In addition to that up above you have the exterior speakers and those do tie into the stereo system so you can connect to that via Bluetooth. And then Casey, a follow-up question, which you covered when we were up on the roof, wanting to know if we can actually add a kayak rack up top on the roof, and if so, when we do that, can we still add solar? Um, so the kayak rack requires a different awning. So to my knowledge, I don't believe it can be added to one afterwards. Um, it would need to be ordered that way. Um, I'm, we can, of course, make some special arrangements in, sort of in, sort of in terms of changing out uh, patio awnings. Uh, but the, the awning that comes with it is just mounted a little bit differently because that kayak, the kayak and luggage rack gets mounted underneath the awning. We, uh, have, yeah, our yeah. Assistant, we have our assistant, Reed. <laughs> Reed, go ahead, go ahead and tell us about these uh, portable panels. My phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> that is Reed Burkholder. He's one of our uh, RV sales consultants. But these are the portable ZAMP panels that uh, you can actually just quick connect into the side of the pre-wire that's tied into the ZAMP uh, control box, which we'll cover as we get inside. So again, these are very lightweight, they collapse, they come with a carrying case, they take up very, very little room. And again, you can go ahead and add these directly to the pre-wire that comes directly from the factory. Um, and I should mention, if you do order the kayak um, and luggage rack, you can still have the solar that's on the roof. So. Um, you don't have to eliminate that. Uh, otherwise, screen doors, uh, I know someone had asked about that. So the great thing about this is the fact that you can't even tell that it's there when you're not using it. Um, but it does slide all the way across so that that way you can have complete coverage of your side entry door. Um, really easy to use. Uh, of course, you also have your powered entry step. Uh, the other thing that I want to make sure that I point out is the fact that our powered awning, which will uh, will show the way that that operates when we wrap up uh, when we wrap up the webcast, uh, but there are two ways to control that awning. 
Um, of course, just inside the entry step, you've got lots of controls there, but the other location for it is actually just next to the passenger seat. You've got an additional switch located here. Uh, because the unique item with the powered awning is the fact that um, your side door does need to be closed in order to operate that. So um, your options would essentially be to either stand inside of the motorhome in order to access your powered switch from the entry, but otherwise you can actually still be standing outside the coach watching your awning extend and controlling that here from the passenger entry. And Casey, just a couple of follow-up questions on uh, solar. Um, a guest wanted to know the cost of this um, portable solar package right here. And uh, retail on this ZAMP power panel system is uh, $660 um, from ZAMP. And then again, that will just quick connect and plug in right to the sidewall alongside the passenger side. Another question that came up is wanting to know if we could add additional solar panels to the roof itself, which we could. And dependent upon how many you wanted, the size of them, and they would have to be mounted forward um, of the uh, Max Air Premium Vent System right up near the uh, King Control um, fixed mass jack antenna. Um, another question that then came in is wanting to know um, that the fact that the roof box for solar is facing forward, wanting to know if that can be impacted by rain and corrupting the controls. And um, I know that that was one thing that Winnebago had talked about and didn't believe that there was any risk towards that. So again, while we don't have a lot of these out on the road, we certainly don't anticipate that. All right, I think with that, we can go ahead and uh, make our way inside of the coach. So um, here in the cab area, a few things to uh, mention, of course you have uh, your cab seats that rotate and swivel, it's extremely easy to operate that. Uh, on your passenger side, you have your optional flip-up table, so that that way you can essentially use this as an additional um, additional reading space, eating space, whatever you may be doing, because that very easily, of course, goes away. Uh, the other item to note, I mean, really just speaking to the engineering and design of the 59K is the fact that they, they virtually want to give you storage anywhere that they possibly can since you do have such a large cargo carrying capacity. And so here in the floor, you actually have really easy access to additional storage. And even just behind the driver's seat, there's also additional hidden, hidden storage through the floor. Um, so again, that removes very easily and then gives you an additional um, storage location there as well. And then Casey, while you're down in that area, one thing that was thought through with the, within this coach is the fact that if you are utilizing the passenger seat here as a computer workstation uh, with this table out, you'll find that down below there is um, a 110 volt jack as well as two USB ports right down here. So a wonderful computer workstation right here. Yeah, it's quite amazing. I mean, you'll truly find USB ports hidden all throughout the coach, which is really great because for most of us, that's how we charge a lot of things these days in terms of tablets and phones and everything else. It's all USB ports, and so you've got lots of access to uh, different ways of charging those. Um, up above, of course, you've got some additional storage there. Uh, currently, that's where we're storing um, our front cab window blind. Um, otherwise, galley space. Uh, of course, you have uh, the polished Corian countertops. You really, for a B-Van, you've got some nice counter space to work with um, because of a few reasons. Of course, you've got this nice space that's here. You also have the pull-out um, so that you've got additional countertop space and working space that way. Uh, but then let's just talk about the sink for a little bit. Um, truly, the amount of, the amount of uh, functionality that you get from this sink is really great. So, of course, you have your high-rise faucet. Um, making it very easy in terms of washing uh, so that you can do that. You also have the drying rack um, that easily you can pull that off of there, uh, but otherwise a great way uh, for drying your dishes. And then you have this entire tub that comes with even more things. So you have um, a nice drainer so that, that way when you're washing dishes you can easily drain right into the sink. An additional tub that is virtually the perfect size for inside of the sink and then a cutting board that fits that as well. So a lot of really great accessories that are all part of this sink system. Um, and then the nice thing is that uh, when you're not using that, it also has the hinged glass top so that that way you have additional workspace uh, when you aren't utilizing the sink. Otherwise, in terms of other appliances, of course you have the same hinged glass top on your two burner range. 
Um, so again, that would use uh, your LP source. And then down below, you have uh, your refrigerator. Now this, again, as Ron mentioned, in terms of things working off of 12 volt, your refrigerator will function off of 12 volt or your 110 volt power. And does feature, you've got some nice adjustable racks in here, as well as some shelving, and then also um, a nice little ice box as well so that you do have some freezer space. Yeah, so a really unique refrigerator, which is actually a compressor-driven uh, refrigerator and freezer. So as Casey mentioned, it'll run off of 110 or 12 volt. And while we're down in this area, um, a guest had a question. Uh, they were told by another RV dealer uh, that that oven that you're about to cover, Casey, is microwave only. Oh, um, which is not true. Uh, this is a convection microwave. And I mean, an easy way to tell that just uh, from right now looking at it being brand new, it does have the sticker across the front that talks about the speed cook features. Uh, so basically, your convection microwave and grill will allow you to bake, brown, roast just the way that an oven would, and then also functions the same way as a microwave. Um, this is 110 volt power, so as Ron mentioned, you would need your generator started or to have shoreline power in order to utilize this. But right in your controls, you've got easy switches for all of that that specifically states convection, grill, microwave, everything that you need in order to easily operate that. And Casey, while you're down in that area, I guess chatted in a questioning, um, and I'm guessing we're going to have to look inside, wanting to know the cubic footage on the fridge. And oh, I, and, yeah. And I apologize. I don't know that off the top of my head, but if you want to just take a peek in there and see if it's on one of the labels. And that's the beauty of these interactive presentations is that we can quickly look and see if it's just readily apparent in there. Uh, not that I see, no. But we do have all the model number information that we could easily figure that out. So I'll research that and we'll come back to that question, but thank you for chatting that in. All right, the other item, um, as we're down here, I'll also just mention the drawer system that Winnebago utilizes. Um, of course, all of their drawers are full length extension. They're on the metal ball bearing glides, just like what you would have at home, so you can easily access that entire space. The other unique feature about not only the couple drawers, but also all of the overhead storage, is that it does have the positive latching push button locks, so that that way the, your drawer or your overhead cabinets virtually cannot come open without you unlocking them. We'll check out that same thing as you can see with your overhead cabinets. Same system. Uh, this does have the Aosta Cherry uh, cabinetry. This is made by Technoform and specifically designed for this unit. Uh, really nice thing about the Technoform cabinets is that they're so lightweight. So again, helping you with that cargo carrying capacity that you have. And Casey, we just had a uh, guest actually do the research for us, um, indicating oh. that the fridge was 4.3 cubic feet. And I'll go ahead and validate that. Another guest had just commented that uh, it seems difficult to utilize a refrigerator freezer of that size uh, while dry camping or hotel camping uh, without propane. So keep in mind there's a 100 watt solar panel up on the roof that will charge the dual AGM glass mat batteries, so absorb glass mat batteries. Uh, this coach comes with two AGM glass mat batteries. Um, so a 100 watt solar panel charger up on the roof as well as the capability of adding portables. So a tremendous amount of charging capability uh, to continue to power all of the different 12 volt appliances within the coach. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the things that we have on the on the ceiling here inside the coach which is basically just the opposite of what we looked at on the roof. Um, so starting from the front um, you've got the uh, King Jack uh, control for your antenna. As you can see you've got the digital strength meter so that, that way you don't have to spend so much time uh, testing out in order to get uh, the most signal strength. I believe what Ron's showing us now is the LED light. I was, just, I was just hoping to get a better display on the, oh, on the okay. LED. Um, but we do have LED lights inside the coach, so um, that they obviously function much more efficient, efficiently is a huge benefit to them, but you also don't have to change them out as frequently as what you would um, with the standard uh, incandescent lighting yeah and the and the specs on those indicate that it's actually a 70 percent energy savings on these led style compared to um, either halogen or as casey mentioned the incandescent so again just another way to really conserve power to allow you to dry camp if that's something that you'll be utilizing the coach for um, moving forward uh, one of the really unique items here in the 59k is this max air uh, powered ventilator fan that does have the roof vent cover um, so again, you'll just be able to circulate a tremendous amount of air. And like I mentioned, you can utilize that when you are inside of the coach because of that rent, 
that uh, vent cover that is a part of that um, and all built in. Uh, and of course then just behind that is all the, um, the air conditioning unit is where that's physically located. So again, this is a 13,500 BTU high efficiency air conditioner um, with all of your controls and vents in a really great location in terms of where your twin beds are just below that as well as additional venting to the front and rear. Taking a look here on the passenger side, um, we do have uh, a nice uh, LED high definition television. Um, as you just noticed, this is mounted on a swivel mount so that, that way you can point that in either direction, whether you're up in your cab area or here where the twin beds are located. Just above that is where you'd put any of the controls that you maybe need for um, if you do hook up a portable satellite dish or any other additional accessories in terms of your audio and visual items. Um, you also have the amplifier switch for your TV antenna, um, additional 12 volt power, and then of course all of the hookups for uh, those features are located on the right hand side. Above that is our Jensen stereo system. So um, some really great things with this, you've got AM, FM stereo capabilities as well as a CD, DVD player that's a part of that that is um, works directly with your TV already, so you don't have to do any switching with that, or you don't have to bring an additional DVD player with to take up that storage location. And then it also has Bluetooth capabilities, so that that way you can hook up your phone, tablet, anything of that nature, so that you can uh, use that in terms of your music source or, or whatever the case may be. Um, in addition to that, um, on each side of the coach by our twin beds, you also have the MCD roller shades. So you've got an easy way to black out um, your coach. And then of course, we all know how easy those function as well. And then as we're uh, just wrapping up the audio visual components, um, mm -hmm. a guest had um, chatted in on this 22 inch LED wanting to know how many HDMI ports there are. And there are two on the back side of this 22 inch HDTV. Um, also, there are inputs right up through here, although um, these are actually just um, uh, com components. component cables. And then also um, within this home theater system, within the stereo system, yet again another USB port and a de dedicated MP3 that a guest was inquiring about. All right, um, we'll talk a little bit about the bed system now. Um, so one of the items that makes the 59K really unique is the sleeping system that it has available. Um, so this is the Froley sleep system, and what this is is basically you've got individual springs that basically al allow you to get a lot more cushion out of this sleeping space. So not only does Winnebago use the multi-density foam um, with uh, the actual mattress itself and then adds additional pillow top to that, below that versus it just lying on, um, on the platform itself, you have uh, these the spring systems, which as I understand it are independently. Um, they are, yep, they're all independent and you can adjust each of those. Right, so that, that way, whether whether you want more, more cushion or less cushion, you can adjust each one of those accordingly um, so that it's most comfortable for you. In addition to that, while we've, um, thank you, perfect, um, you can see all the additional storage space that you get below this bed as well. Which I believe is only on yep, the it, passenger it, side. Yep, yeah, you got it. Only on the. Um, in addition to that, here at the headrest, uh, we'll take a look at the fact that obviously you have an adjusting headrest, um, so that, that way you can put that at whatever height you'd like. So essentially, um, all the way up, we'll release that, <clears throat> so that you can lay that completely flat. And then you've got several uh, ratcheting locations. So that that way you can put that at whatever location is most comfortable for you and then of course you can see over here you've got additional storage space for any of those items that you need to keep close by and, and casey um just a couple of, of other points on the sproli system um one thing that uh, people tend to overlook is the fact that not only do you get the adjustable um, sleeping positions and the adjust adjustability in the um, firmness of the bed but you also get all the fresh air ventilation which um, that can minimize condensation and potential um, mildew buildup underneath the bed, especially when you're using this multi-density foam. And then you'll also find there are side um, cubby storage on each side. And as we're leaving the bed area, a couple of questions that came back in on the TV, um, wanting to know if this television and this Jensen stereo system are 12 volt or 110, 
and mm -hmm. each of these individually are 12 volts, so you can utilize them out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then another guest had chatted in wanting to know um, how large of a television you could actually upgrade this to. This is a 22 inch, and you know, just based on the appearance of it, depending upon how much of your walkway you wanted to encroach, you probably could go upwards of 26 and potentially even 32. But the downside to that, the mount will certainly will carry it. The, the downside to it is you're going to lose some of your adjustability with the window balance um, and also take up some of your walkway. So if you want to compromise in those two areas, absolutely, we can expand the size of it. Typically, what we find, though, is that you have to stay about 26 inches or under to maintain the fact that it is a 12-volt television. If we jump up over 26, most of those are 110 volt then, which then we could add an inverter, but it just depends on the compromise and the trade-off of your size. But great questions today. Yep. Um, we'll have Josh swivel around so that we can uh, cover our control panel. Um, so one of the really great things that Winnebago does really well is that they do put all of your controls in one convenient location. Um, so I want to just cut that light so we get a little bit less sure. glare. So each of those flex neck, um, flexible gooseneck style reed lamps um, are adjustable and then you can all, obviously you can tuck it all the way around, um, but the beauty of it is that um, it gives you that reading light capability. Push it in, Kate. Oh. Right in the middle. Yep. The light was smarter than me. Um, so. As Ron mentioned, you do have a really convenient light there. We'll keep that off so that, that way we can see things a little bit better. Um, but the first item here is the actual control panel for your solar chart or for your solar panels. Um, so again, that's a multi-stage charging system that you have. Uh, as Ron mentioned, the coach comes with two uh, AGM maintenance-free batteries, um, and so that whole system you can you can essentially control right from this panel as well as the portable that you hook up to it. That's correct and, and you can tailor each one of those um, but what's great about that is it's a multi-stage charging system just like a multi-stage inverter or excuse me converter and so you can get a high charge um, followed all the way down to just a maintenance or a trickle charge so it is a multi-stage uh, solar charge controller from Zamp. Um, just below that is where you'll find all of the controls in terms of um, starting and stopping your generator uh, you can do all of that from this point as well as uh, check out the hour meter in terms of where that's at for you. And then pretty much anything that has to do with your water and waste systems is here as well. Um, so you've got your water pump that you can turn on and off as well as checking all of your tank levels as well as your battery levels too. Um, below that of course is um, the power control system. Uh, basically where you can select whether 30 amp, 20 amp service with your generator. Um, and then the status of that in terms of, um, of what things to shed if needed. Right, and so the concept here is that we may find more individuals just utilizing this in a residential outlet where they may be limited to 15 or 20 amps. So this is the power line system that Winnebago utilizes that will automatically shed appliances rather than tripping the breaker in your home. Uh, you also have an easy way of turning your LP valve on and off. There's also an emergency um, valve that's located right where you fill the LP on the driver's side that we saw earlier. Below that a couple light switches as well as two additional USB ports. There's also two of these on um, with the opposite twin bed. And then this is the control panel for your Truma Combi uh, heating supply. So basically that's going to act as what a furnace would. So you don't have that furnace system uh, that would use up LP. Instead you've got the Truma Combi uh, which is 12 volt or 110 volt. Um, and then that's also your water source as well. And um, so basically you've got a nice convenient, um, it's an LCD monitor yep. uh, where you can control all of that as well. I don't know if there's anything that you want to add to that. One, one nice thing about that that you can actually do is if you know that you are a, a fairly um, um, schedule driven person, you can actually schedule that so that you can use it just like a um, programmable thermostat at home. So you can actually have um, the hot water only kick in during certain times of the day and that's also true of the heat source so if you know that you're only going to be in the coach from six to eight you can actually program it so that that's when it's actually heating your water or providing a heat source all right well i think the last thing that we'll take a look at of course is the rear bathroom area 
Um, so some nice things with this, of course, obviously you have um, a large bathroom area in a small classy van. As you'll notice here, you've got some nice wardrobe space. Some of our additional accessories are stored in this area currently, as well as a nice additional 12 volt powered vent um, here in the bathroom as well, just for that additional uh, ventilation when you are using uh, the shower. Down below, of course, you've got an additional drawer stack so that you've got even more storage uh, here in the bathroom area. And then rotating around, um, you do have the porcelain toilet that uh, is risen up to a nice residential height. Uh, you've got the pull-out sink sprayer so that you've got easy cleaning here in the bathroom area, as well as the fold-down um, sink area that does have this, again, a nice high-rise faucet so that you do have some good clearance here in terms of utilizing this sink. And then that automatically drains into the side. And um, nice light switch so that you've got a nice large light uh, here in the back bathroom area as well. And then Casey, one question that I actually had earlier this week that a guest wanted me to cover also during the webcast is um, originally the thought that this was actually a 12 volt shower drain like we have in a lot of our marine style wet baths and that's actually the overhead light switch. The beauty of the way this was designed is that it's all gravity fed so you don't have to utilize a 12 volt shower drain uh, to bring all of that water away from your sink top area. You also have a nice medicine cabinet area that's here in the bathroom as well. So you're really not losing any of the features of a standard bathroom. Um, you've basically just got the nice compact size. Um, along, the roof, uh, along the ceiling area is where you will find these snaps. And essentially that's for the shower curtain that we saw in the wardrobe closet. So that you can essentially snap off the entire shower area so that you're not getting anything else wet. Just basically saving you some... Um, some cleaning and drying off because they've made it so that basically anything in your bathroom area isn't going to be hurt by getting uh, some moisture on it. However, again, it's just keeping you from having to wipe any of that down. And one of the other appeals with that shower curtain, if you look at where the snaps are at, it'll actually keep a lot of this area dry, whereas in most marine baths, the shower curtain would actually work along the back wall. So uh, it does a real nice job of keeping um, some of the areas dry, including one of the diffusers that come off of the uh, Trumacomi hydronic heating. And one clarification that um, a guest wanted us to make is the fuel sources for the Trumacomi. So how is, how is it powered? And so it, it's powered between the 110 volt and propane. Oh, sorry. Yep. Thank you. All right. Well, unless there's anything else bathroom related, I think we can head up to the cab. And then we'll kind of wrap things up with the, on with the awning demonstration as well. Um, so here in the cab again, uh, this is the Dodge Pro Master chassis. So all of this area is going to come directly from Dodge. Uh, the great thing about these seats, as we talked about, is that they completely swivel in one location. Um, so you don't have to do any sliding forward and back in order to, um, in order to rotate those around. Um, and then in addition to that, in terms of the driver's space, um, you've got some really nice switches that are located here. Again, two more additional USB ports as well as 110 volt outlets. Um, and then, of course, some of your light switches. And so those are really geared so that if you have two people that are both using computer workstations, you can use the pull-out shelf here. You've got um, USB ports there. And then also, as we mentioned earlier, the ones underneath the passenger seat. Yep. And then, um, Casey, if you wouldn't mind, if you could, we always get this question a lot, why we don't reupholster the front seats sure. with, with leather. Yep, and um, that's actually because of all the airbags that are located in the front cab area. So um, you basically, basically have the ultimate level of safety uh, because the seats themselves do have side airbags in them. and Basically covering those in leather would then be compromising the airbags uh, that are part of this cab system. So we'll go ahead and rotate the uh, cab chair around. And uh, the steering wheel does uh, telescope for you so that you can get that to a comfortable location for you. Um, in terms of your front cab items, of course, everything is pretty um, automotive standard. Uh, it does come with the TomTom Tom navigation system as well as a one-year uh, subscription to your Sirius satellite radio. Um, again, additional USB ports as well as a 12-volt port as well. 
Um, anything else to add in the cab area? Uh, keyless entry for all three doors, uh, which is a nice light duty automotive style convenience. So you literally can use just that one key fob all the time yep. uh, for all three doors. Got the nice cab mat um, that does specifically have the Travato label as a part of that as well. So three different sets of airbags, um, two within the um, restraint area and then the two, one underneath the steering wheel and one in front of the passenger. So three different sets, six total. Um, does have the nice instrument panel applique, uh, which is also overlaid the cup holders down below. And then Casey, um, if you could just reiterate uh, once again, um, the gas versus diesel and also gas versus um, propane on the gen sets. Oh, okay. Um, so with your gas coach that we're in today, so um, power wise, you've got 280 horsepower, 260 pounds feet of torque. If you're in the diesel version, you'll have 174 uh, horsepower with 295 pounds feet of torque. Uh, with your gas coach, you're also going to have a gas powered generator, which is a 2800 watt. Um, and then uh, 2,800 kilowatt. And with your diesel, then you'd have an LP power generator, which is a 2,500 watt kilowatt. Um, otherwise, of course, fuel efficiency, you'll get slightly better fuel efficiency in the diesel, as well as a, uh, as well as a higher cost, of course, when you order that. And then a couple of other specific questions. Can Sirius XM satellite radio be used with the engine off? It can, can it? And nope. I don't think there's a radio power switch, so it, it would have to be. Keep in mind, within the Jensen system, though, you can Bluetooth your smartphone or tablet to utilize any of those apps directly through the, the Jensen system right up through here. Um, also, another guest wanted to know whether or not the coach has uh, the lane departure uh, warning system, which it doesn't yet. Um, however, um, we are now a mobilized, um, authorized installer, so we can actually install... Uh, the mobile eye collision avoidance system uh, directly in the Travato, which includes the lane departure awards as alerts, excuse me, as well as the forward collision warning system, uh, the speed limit indication, and all of those safety enhancements that come with the mobile eye system. So we can add that um, right here. We are a factory licensed authorized installer of mobile eye, so we can actually install that right here at our dealership. It's a it's a wonderful safety collision avoidance system. Um, including the speed limit indication it will literally read the speed limits and once you set up your tolerance it'll alert you to when you're over that tolerance uh, in terms of speed uh, warning indication so that's available as well um, also if we could just um, cover the sleeping system one more time um, we had a guest chat in that um, her husband is actually um, six feet two and is concerned about a 74 inch sleeping surface and the 74 inch sleeping surface is actually the one that's alongside the driver's side and the passenger sleeping surface right here is actually a true 80 inch so you'll be able to go to six feet eight inches right here with an 80 inch sleeping surface and 74 inches alongside the uh, driver's side uh, i guess wanted to know how much mobile i cost um, we do the same price that winnebago installs it for in the other models and it runs right around a thousand dollars installed for mobile i uh, and then another guest wanting to know if there was an under the hood generator that came with the diesel version. And my understanding is that it is the 2500 watt uh, Cummins Onan LP generator that comes with the coach if you do the diesel version. And we're getting our first diesel version with the um, six speed automated manual transmission here within the next probably two to four weeks. I would imagine that the LP generator that comes with the diesel is, um, we haven't had our first one, but I believe it's mounted in the same place that the gas Correct. generator is. Yep. Yep. And so then that would be the same generator that you're find, you'll find in the air product, which again burns at about four tenths of a gallon to six tenths of an hour, right around that half load mark. Uh, another guest wanting to know how many uh, this coach will sleep, and it's designated for the two twin beds in the rear. Uh, whereas the 59G has the full bed, that hinges up against the driver's side sidewall and then has the flex bed system up front. So again, this is this is really a, a coach that's built for two, although um, there are some nice um, aero style um, tent rooms that can be added to the rear if that really is something that's important to be able to sleep more than that. But really the coach itself is designed for two. Yep, and keep in mind that we do have, um, we did complete the webcast on the 59G version of the Travato. Um, 
well that was a few months back now but all of that is archived in um, our webcast uh, video library uh, that's right on our website so you can see any of our previous webcasts by going to our website and so we do have one that's specifically on the 59g in addition to our walk around video that would be a part of our inventory listing and then consistent with that casey a guest chatted in wanting to know uh, fuel mileage on gas versus diesel sure so um the gas coach should get uh, basically we would expect for you to average somewhere in the upper teens um 16 17 miles to the gallon we do have a guest uh, that just purchased one that is getting 18 um, and uh, the diesel will probably add about 10 percent to that so um, you could be looking at about 20 miles to the gallon with a diesel version of the coach awesome great questions today we really appreciate that hopefully you all do as well we're going to wrap up um, with um, the demonstration on bringing the awning in and out and uh, we'll keep the chat lines open as we're doing that and as questions come in we'll cover those as well so there's two little orange tabs one on each side that allow you to uh, pivot the awning if you want one side slightly lower to have some of the morning dew roll off or dependent upon how your coach is leveled. So if you just bring these all the way down first to its lowest position. And then there's two little pins that um, hold each of the arms um, directly against the coach. These slide together. They conveniently stow right in the main tube of the awning. They snap back into place. I'll go out like this. Oh, I think you have it. Maybe. I don't think it goes on the bottom. I thought. Yeah, it is on the bottom. You might have to come out a little bit. So now it's locked into place and you can utilize the power switch. Double check questions one last time. Uh, one uh, question that a guest had chatted in wanting to know whether or not the ZAMP portable system will fit uh, underneath the passenger side bed uh, that we showed when we lifted up the bed. And so I don't think it will, but let's, let's find out. So this is literally the um, suitcase that comes with the ZAMP portable panels that can be added. And it does. So we appreciate that. Great question, great point. And I was just judging that based on appearance. So sometimes looks can be deceiving. So great question. But wonderful questions today. We certainly appreciate everybody chatting in. 
Uh, we also have live chat directly on our website, right on listen.com, uh, where we literally have seven of our factory trained consultants uh, staffing that on a live basis. So when that actually does um, pop up, you do have the capability to go ahead and chat directly with any of our factory trained consultants. Also keep in mind this type of a live interactive presentation we can do in the comfort of your home or office at any point in time um, on any of our in-stock RVs right here in our studio at Litson RV where we are literally only a mile north of the Winnebago, Itasca and Winnebago Touring Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa. Uh, special thanks today to Josh behind the camera as well as Casey Singlestad, our sales manager. Great job today guys, wonderful questions.